When I was really little, um, we, my mum used to work from home and she's a garden designer um, and she had this like huge table, you know, like a massive drawing table with loads and loads and loads of different coloured pencils um, and yeah, loads of like, rulers and like really heavy, weighty, beautiful objects that she used for drawing and designing. Um, and I remember just like sneaking into her studio and like looking at all of her pencils and all of her tools and being like, oh yeah, so satisfying. This is probably at like, you know, yeah, I was like five years old or something. So, well, I actually knew I wanted to be a fashion designer from the age of like seven. Um, very sadly, but yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember being on a ski holiday with my cousin and her being like, I'm going to be a doctor. And I was like, I'm going to be a fashion designer. I used to have these books just full of pictures of really boring clothes. I mean, just like with my pens and stuff, just like <laughs> drawing the same pair of trousers again and again and again, obsessively. Yeah, yeah. My grandpa used to, well, he, yeah, used to run a factory. My great grandfather did as well, Redmond Brothers in Yorkshire. Um, and they were a trouser making factory in, near Hebden Bridge, in Hebden Bridge and Halifax. Um, and so, yeah, they used to just, I mean, they didn't actually talk about the making of clothing that much. They used to talk about like the running of factories and things, but um, yeah, I knew that it was in the family, that making clothes was in the family. And um, yeah, I guess I got it from that probably. And my grandpa's got a really old industrial machine, like the one that I've got here. Yeah, he used to sew, I mean, he used to like hand his trousers and make all the curtains and like, make those soft furnishings around the house. And so I do remember, I remember him sewing all the time this industrial machine. I've always been really into fancy dress um, and big into princesses, obviously. The dog I'm into princesses, quite a cliche. Um, yeah, but I remember making myself this like huge conical hat. I was really proud of, and it was just like a massive cone, basically. So that was, I think, one of the first things I ever made. Um, made of like this horrible synthetic silk material um, and it had a, a like a scarf thing that came off it so that I looked like Rapunzel um, and then yeah just like bodging together clothing because I've always been super opinionated about stuff and yeah things my taste doesn't really exist or like I've mashed things together from other people's ideas and it doesn't yeah you can't buy those things um and that's always been the case so like i'll just like mesh mash together like random random clothing from a very young age i'm exposed to like quite a lot of um like obviously designers send me drawings all the time and i have to keep on top of trends and stuff um to some extent and it means that um i have very very particular taste and yeah, so I make most of my clothes. Like I uh, made these dungarees, for example, with this scrunchie. <laughs> yeah, I make most of my clothes. I've always loved a brand called Paloma Wool, who are based in Barcelona. Um, and they're like super creative. Um, their roots are like sort of more workwear based stuff. But um, yeah, they're now like more Gen Z style things. So like quite out there. Um, super bright, really like techy looking things. Um, they're really inspiring. I really like them. Quite a lot of Californian designers. I quite like like a piece of part. Are really amazing. They do like silk dresses that are like also super practical. Um, and yeah, I used to work for a brand called Melena Silvano. She does sheepskin jackets and also small collections. Um, and she, I love all of her work, everything that comes out. She does these amazing shapes and yeah, she's really inspiring. My first job isn't when I was first earning money because it's the fashion industry. Um, so yeah, I interned through, so I, when I was doing my degree in my third year, we do a placement year. And I worked for Alexander McQueen and a brand called Hussein Shalain. Um, and 
yeah, it was all unpaid internships, of course. Classic. But um, yeah, Hussein Shalayan, I think, was really inspiring for me because that's when I chose to be a pattern cutter. Um, there was these two pattern cutters, Izumi and Rio, who were these like Japanese pattern cutters who blew my mind. Like they were wizards when it came to pattern making. Um, and in fact, they led the collections more than the design, like Hussein himself did. I think he would come up with these like super conceptual drawings and they would interpret them, but like with super clever like shapes and like, yeah, just really creative um, people and so fast as well. You just see like card flying everywhere. They'd be like, um, which was pretty impressive. Um, so that was my like first job in the fashion industry. Um, and of course, like classic, I resented not being paid and stuff, but yeah, they made up for it and they used to like take us out for drinks and stuff. And it was brilliant, it was really good. Um, and then my first paid job in the fashion industry uh, took a long time to come. <laughs> and was, I had a design job for a uniform design company um, that was very fleeting and quick. Um, but the first one I actually enjoyed was, yeah, for Melina Silvano, who is the sheepskin uh, coat designer. Um, and that was in Forest Row in Sussex. So I used to drive down from London in my little car and, yeah, go and work for her in the forest, which was great. It was absolutely picturesque. You've got to treat anyone that you work with like family and friends, um, especially if you work in the fashion industry. Um, if you can try and ignore seasons um, because it's not relevant if you're if you're doing good design then it should last throughout trends it shouldn't you shouldn't have to redo it again and again and again um it's just be re really really kind to everyone like Hussein was so kind I'm in it um but yeah it does happen sometimes he down and bought me a coffee and he's quite a famous guy and I was completely starstruck absolutely didn't know what to say and like yeah tongue-tied um but yeah he like sat me down and had a chat about things and I just thought I really respected that and I thought yeah that's how yeah I learned a lot about how to treat people and how not to treat people I work with a bunch of brands sort of across the UK at the minute um and yeah they send me drawings so designs um, and I work out how to create that design into a real thing um, so yeah I'll cut the patterns which are here um, draft them from scratch usually or from measurements that they give me and then I'll make a toile which is basically a cotton prototype um, and then we'll go and do a fitting on uh, like a fit model and then I'll make changes to the pattern and then we'll send those patterns to a factory and a factory will make a sample um, and we do that process once once more um, but yeah it's like a slow way of doing it and I think if you work for fast fashion the process is like condensed down into like one fitting if you're lucky um, which is often why high street clothing can be quite ill-fitting and like not thought out in terms of functionality and things. So yeah, I like working for brands that are slow. Basically. I've dabbled with um, running a brand and I have a project in the pipeline um, that's actually been in the pipeline for about 10 years. <laughs> but um, I've got some trousers for, for lots of trousers. There's dungarees are also um, part of that. Um, and they're based on the trousers that my family used to produce. Um, I like workwear trousers, uh, sort of based on different practical things. So like what, a pair of workwear trousers, a pair of dungarees, um, a pair of like sailors trousers that are like, um, my family used to make navy trousers for, um, yeah, throughout like the 18, like late 1800s. Um, and they're really interesting. Um, yeah, and yeah, so I'm I'm working on a trouser company called Pins at the minute. Throughout lockdown number one, um, I sort of lost quite a lot of my 
we work because people weren't putting things into development anymore and um, weren't taking on risk. Um, so I have quite a lot of free time on my hands and I've always been really interested in backpacks and so I started making these backpacks, um, which, yeah, it was like a limited, um, sort of limited edition ones, which these are actually all the colours I did um, and these are the linings. Um, yeah, but they're made of like dead stock fabrics and yeah, uh, they're really durable I hope, and quite lightweight. So yeah, I just wanted like a fun, like a, a more fun version of um, some of the technical backpacks that I'm often using.